Board meeting, please stand, join us in the pledge. Councilman Loman. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Supervisor Wareheim. Here. Councilman McCarthy. Here. Councilwoman Nowak. Here. Councilwoman Inzarella. Here. Councilman Loman. Here. Okay, we will begin this afternoon. We have one site plan. Uh, good afternoon, Supervisor and members of the Town Board. Uh, I'm Peter Hans, uh, Planning Director. Uh, we have one site plan for the Board to consider this afternoon, acting as the Board of Site Plan Review. It's called Jay Nazaro, 711 Lake Avenue. This property is located at the northeast corner of Lake Avenue and Woodlawn Avenue in St. James. Uh, the recommendation is for approval subject to eight conditions. The eight conditions are up on the, uh, the screen right now for the board to review. The f uh, no, you're good. Uh, the first condition um, is that they obtain applicable permits from the town building department. The second is with respect to preservation uh, fencing of existing uh, vegetation. The third is that we're still working on the architecture of the building. Um, and it requires that the applicant submit a site plan addendum application within 90 days of this approval for modifications to the proposed architecture. I can go. This is the site, as we all know, at the corner of uh, Lake and Woodlawn. This is uh, the former Capital One Bank, Sunrise Federal Savings. It's had numerous names over the years. Um, it's been abandoned, let's say, at least four years. A uh, drone shot of the property. Uh, the proposal is to demolish the existing bank building that's on the property and replace it with a new 7-Eleven uh, building that's slightly larger than the existing building in roughly the same location. Uh, the square footage of the existing bank is 2,900 square feet, uh, and it would be replaced with a 4,000 square foot 7-Eleven. Uh, um, as you can see from some of the, si uh, the, the photos, uh, the building is in some disrepair. It is safe, it is boarded up, but cosmetically uh, it's in need of some maintenance. One of the conditions... Um, which is number five, is it says the sale of vape and hookah products shall be prohibited. Um, what you see on the screen is an email from a representative from 7-Eleven stating that they are in agreement and uh, mm -hmm. there will not be the sale of vape or hookah products at the new location once opened. This is a site plan. Like I said, you can see the building is roughly in the same location as the existing bank building. However, uh, the, the parking uh, will still be to the rear of the building or the east of the building. However, it'll be serving like the front of the building. So one of the things we want to ensure here is that what is visible from Lake Avenue after the town invested you know, quite a bit of money in uh, refurbishment of the road is that this new building not look like the back of a building facing our, uh, the road frontage. And this is partly why we're requesting that an addendum application be submitted. Although we've made a lot of progress with the applicant uh, who is here, um, this is the proposed rendering of the building. Um, we believe that we just need a little bit more time to do some more modifications to the building. Um, this is a side view. And this is the west elevation. So this is what you would see facing Lake Avenue, whereas this is what's facing the parking lot. Close to a mirror image, but not quite. So there's been a request that uh, there be, be some more enhancements, such as gables, larger posts, uh, uh, columns, things like that. So we need a little bit more time to work on that. Um, signage is uh, condition number seven is all wall signs be wood carved exter externally illuminated and proposed ground sign be a monument style um, basically we're looking to use what we did at fort salonga so low lying ground signs uh, wood etched and wall signs similar to this style 
Um, as I said, the applicant is in agreement. Um, and here, if there are any questions, does the board have any questions for me right now? I do want to 7-Eleven, ex existing 7-Eleven will be closed down. Uh, that is correct. Um, condition number four states that prior to the issuance of a final certificate of occupancy, the existing 7-Eleven franchise located at 356 Lake Avenue, St. James shall be vacated. Okay, thank you. The applicant has agreed to that. Yes. Any other questions by the board? Well, thank you. When they vacate that 7-Eleven, will they take the building down or what will they do with it? Um, that's to be determined, but no, I assume 7 Eleven's just a, a tenant of that building, so the property owner, you know, they'll try to remarket it or somebody else will try to, you know, uh, redevelop the site. We so don't know. They'll take all the signage off and everything. And yes. Sure. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Hans. Um, the site plan will be voted on um, at the end of the meeting. We'll move sitting as Board of Water Commissioners, Deputy Clark. Okay, the minutes approval of September 21st, 2023. Uh, the receiver of taxes to include a levy on the 2023-2024 tax bill for unpaid water charges against various property owners in the Smithtown Water District and the St. James Water District. There's a transfer between budget accounts. And the last is a resolution is in accordance with the increase by the Suffolk County Water Authority of the rate which it charges to the Smithtown and St. James Water Districts, effective January 1st, 2024, there'll be an increase to $2.82 per thousand gallons of water. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowick? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Weirheim? Yes. Reconvening as town board. The supervisor appoints Travis Mafia to the Youth Advisory Board for the term from November 8th, 2023 to December 31st, 2025. There are two Veteran Day parades, both on Saturday, November 1st. The first is for Sergeant John W. Cook, VFW post from 10 until approximately 1. And the second is the Nisicog VFW post from 9.30 until approximately 12. And the Smithtown Kicker Soccer Club 5K Turkey Trot on Thursday, November 23rd from 8 until approximately 12. There are two public hearings today. The first, both hearings will be presented by Martin Simon, uh, Assistant Town Attorney. The first is for the Town Board to consider the Town's entry onto property located at 4022 Lake Avenue South in Nisconsin. Good afternoon, Mr. Supervisor, members of the Town Board. I'm Martin Simon, one of the Assistant Town Attorneys for the Town of Smithtown. The purpose of today's first public hearing is for the town board to determine whether or not to enter upon the property at 422 Lake Avenue South. Um, we have a series of photos of the subject site up on the screen now. These photos were taken on November 6th, yesterday, and they depict the conditions at the site. There's been a constant accumulation of junk, rubbish, and debris at the site. We did notice the property owner via a 72-hour notice, the first step in this proceeding, on August 11th of 2023. Um, an attempt was made by the homeowner in early September to mow the grass, but that's about as far as she got. <clears throat> Since then, there's been no progress, and the pictures depict the accumulation of rubbish and debris at the site, and the grass, again, is tall and unkempt. Does anyone have any questions at all about this property? Is, is anybody living there? Yes. There is a woman who lives there with her mother, the property owner, Yin Yang. And they, from that picture, it looks like there's handicap apparatuses and so forth and so on. Is there any way that we can get social services to maybe give them a hand if there is a disabled person in that house? I've been told through public safety that we've attempted to get the Department of Social Services involved, Adult Protective Services, um, but I'll circle back with them again and see where they're at with that. Yeah, because if we can help them, that would be great. Enough. Absolutely. Well, that's already been attempted on a number of occasions with Suffolk PD and social services to no avail, which leads us where we are today. Would the legislative 
Leslie Kennedy knows about it. Yeah, the legislator does. She is aware of the situation at the house. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, the legislator knows about it. She is aware of the situation at the house. And that there's been no action taken. No that. action taken. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience wishes to be heard on this public hearing? Nothing. Then I move to close. Second. <laughs> Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Wareheim? Yes. The second uh, public hearing is for the town's entry onto property located at 769 Middle Country Road in St. James. Again, Mr. Supervisor, members of the town board, I'm Martin Simon, one of the assistant town attorneys for the town of Smithtown. The purpose of today's second public hearing is for the town to consider whether or not to enter upon the property at 769 Middle Country Road, St. James, New York, and remove or remediate the unsafe structure at that property. Again, on the screen, we have a series of photos of the site. This is the old Empire Buffet. I believe this was Ling Ling years ago. This is on the north side of 25, very close to Smith Haven Chrysler D Jeep Dodge Ram. Um, we had the, actually the building director had sent a notice to remove or remediate the structure back on September 20th of this year. We were recently contacted by the council for the property owner, and I believe they are in the audience today and would like to be heard by the board. Um, specifically, the building department found this particular structure to be structurally unsafe abandoned since approximately 2018, <laughs> multiple property maintenance issues as this, at the site, as you could see, unsanitary conditions with regard to the interior of the structure because allegedly the fire suppression system had failed and, and exploded and the, the building was flooded and obsolescence was also noted as a result of the dilapidation and abandoned state of the property. The town has already taken two steps with regard to this property. Number one, the building department sent out our contractor, and as you can see in the photo, we boarded up the access points, i.e. the windows and the doors. And number two, there was a stairway in the back leading to the second story. That stairway <laughs> was particularly unsafe, as noted by the building department, and we did have our contractor remove that outdoor staircase. Additionally, the building director is present today if any of the board should have any questions for him. Any questions by the board? Nothing. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to be heard in this public hearing? Yes, on behalf of the uh, property owners. Thank you. Come on up. Simon, thank you, uh, board members for listening. Thank you, board members, for listening to me. Um, my name is Michael Jin. I'm an attorney, I'm a local attorney. I, uh, I've been retained by the um, by 769 St. James Holding, who's the owner of this particular property. And I would like to give the board a brief history about what has the property owner done since uh, acquiring the property back in 2018. They have been actively, actively looking for um, uh, lessees for the past three years. Um, there was a significant uh, step towards getting a lessee. There was a contract, a lease, that was signed back in 2019, late 2019. And that was with a long shot barn and grill. Uh, at the time of the, uh, the lease, the, um, the tenants actually engaged in this property, tearing everything out inside the property, uh, bringing it to a state where uh, there is no sheetrock. Uh, the entire first floor was exposed with um, uh, open, I guess, wood. Um, and then there was no walls or anything. They, they began to install a heating system in the building when COVID hit. And by April of 2020, the, uh, the tenants absconded 
uh, abandoned the lease. And we have had um, put in very good faith effort into looking for another tenant. Currently, the, the, the building is on the market for sale. And this was verified with Mr. Simon earlier today when I spoke to him. Um, there is, uh, we, we do anticipate the uh, activities in the real estate market to be picking up um, in the coming months. And we are looking to uh, sell this property in the, on the open market. As far as the condition of the property, uh, the, the fire suppression system that exploded back in 2019, that may have caused uh, significant damage early 2019. Since 2019, there has been, since, since that particular event, uh, Mr. Mr. Liu has, uh, uh, at, at the suggestion of the town building department, hired a, a mold remediation firm and had professional work done inside the building. Uh, and on top of that, when the, uh, when the lessees, um, the, when the lessees Lawn Shop Bar and Grill original went into the building in late 2019, uh, they had uh, removed all of the, um, the paneling, the, the drywalls inside the property, which further um, eliminates any possibility of, of mold growing. So the inside of the building, Okay, thank you. So the inside of the building, although it has not been occupied for the past three or four years, it is completely gutted. So there is no chance that uh, it's, it's, it's grown to a degree where it's, uh, it's hazardous to, uh, uh, to anyone's physical health. That's number one. Secondly, as you can see, the entire building at the, uh, at the help of the, the town, as well as the, uh, Mr. Liu's uh, uh, own funds, it's completely secured and boarded up. Uh, at this point, we're looking for the town to give us some more time to work with, um, um, I guess, um, uh, Mr. White on bringing the, the building to a minimum level of safety standards so we are able to further pursue a buyer uh, in the open market in the coming months. We anticipate that the building will be sold in the next six months or so um, coming into the spring of 2024. Uh, I, asked the, I asked the board to, to give us some time um, instead of uh, considering uh, tearing it down um, to bring it to a level where uh, it's um, to minimize any, any potential health hazard uh, to be able to, uh, to have a good chance of selling it. Right, Council, what I would yes. recommend, um, you stay after the meeting, speak with Mr. White and the town attorney. Yes, we do have some time parameters that we have discussed, so I would ask you to, after the meeting, meet with the town attorney, Mr. White, and they'll fill you in on, uh, on what we feel is necessary for you to move forward. Yes. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll move to close. Second. Mm -hmm. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Wareheim? Yes. <clears throat> Okay, uh, we have five advertisements for public hearing. Resolution one, two, and five are all for Thursday, November 16th at two o'clock. The first is chapter 207, entitled Noise. The second is chapter 221, Property Maintenance. And the last one is the Community Development Program Year 224 and Disseminate Public Notice to the Interested Community Groups. Resolution two and three, I'm sorry, resolution three and four are for the hearing on Tuesday, December 12th. The first is also chapter 221, property maintenance in regards to vacant building registration. And the second is amendments to the traffic code part two entitled schedules as it pertains to town parking areas. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Wareheim? Yes. On the consent agenda, number one to 23 and consent resolutions one and two in the minutes of 10 three is there anyone on the town board that wishes to remove any resolutions on the consent agenda no councilman loman yes councilwoman inzarella yes councilwoman nowick yes councilman mccarthy yes supervisor wareheim yes the town board to issue a secret negative de declaration determination in the following three manners 
per the recommendation of the Environmental Protection Director. Adopt Local Law 15-2023, entitled Zoning, as it relates to vape shop restrictions. The application for site plan approval by Jay Nazaro Partnership for Jay Nazaro 711 Lake Avenue. And the last is to adopt the 2024 proposed capital plan. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Wareheim? Yes. Award the following bid and authorize the purchase of the associated goods or services. Bid 2377 for the printing and distribution of tax bills to LNS Graphic Services. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilman Nowak? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Wareheim? Yes. Award the following request for proposals. 2336 for transit oriented <coughs> development plan for the downtown area of Smithtown to Tritech Real Estate Company and 2330 for professional services for the design of the Long Beach Marina West to L.K. McLean Associates. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Wareheim? Yes. The town board to approve the following. An extension of agreement with Wareheim LFG Services for one year term for the operation and monitoring and maintenance of landfill <coughs> gas system at the municipal <laughs> services. Yeah. Extension of agreement with Wareham LFG services for a one year term for methane gas monitoring and reporting services at various town facilities. The retention of service of John Guest Realty Appraisal to perform an appraisal of the property located at 176 2nd Street in St. James. An application for renewal quote for storage tank liability insurance policy for the Long Beach Marina fuel storage tank for 2023-2024. Terminate an agreement with LEAP Legal Software, the town attorney's office, effective immediately. The next two resolutions are for the receiver of taxes to include a levy on the 2023-2024 tax bill. The first is for unpaid Suffolk County Water Authority charges, and the second is for unpaid solid waste fees. The next four are extensions of bids. Bid 2343, plow blades and cutting edges with bulk manufacturing. 2190 for the sale of surplus metal material with Gershaw Recycling. 2195 for office cleaning services with NV Maintenance Service. 22104 at annual service bid for the disposal of construction and demolition debris with Palmanock Environmental. The Parks Department to purchase a utility vehicle from Deer and Company. The adoption of local law 15. 2023, Chapter 322, entitled Zoning. The ratification of the supervisor's execution of an agreement with PSENG regarding the payment for restoration work along the Lake Avenue corridor in St. James. Terminate the agreement with Village of Nisiquag dated April 25, 2018 for the shared use of a vacuum <coughs> truck effective immediately. Amendment to the agreement with SHI Government Solutions dated August 22, 22 for cloud first data backup and recovery services to purchase additional backup capacity. Reinstatement of employee 5719 to the full time position of park ranger in the Department of Public Safety. Authorize the town attorney to commence an action in Suffolk County Supreme Court against all state insurance company. An amendment to the 2023 highway road program to add treetop terrace in Smithtown and Rutherford Street in St. James. Assignment of agreement for a parking permit management system with United Public Safety to T2 Systems. Adoption of the 2024 capital budget and the 2025 to 2028 capital program. Adoption of the 2024 preliminary budget. A ratification of the supervisor's execution of the collective bargaining agreement with the civil service employees. And the last is pursuant to article 17C of the CSE Collective Bargaining Agreement, Town Employee 2264, is to complete a mandatory defensive driving course. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilwoman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Wareheim? Yes. The Town Board to issue a written consistency determination pursuant to Chapter 151 of the Town Code that the Coastal Consistency Review 2023-04 is consistent with the Local Water Revitalization Plan, per the Planning Director. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Wareheim? Yes. Authorize the acceptance of the following. A donation from the Smithtown Library and Wisconsin branch for $200 to the animal shelter. 
Jerem Dantone in memory of Stephen Werner in the amount of $50 to the animal shelter and a donation of a Manhattan granite rock from Skyview Stone in Kings Park to the Department of Parks and Buildings. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Wareheim? Yeah. Authorize the supervisor to execute the following resolutions on a form approved by the town attorney. An amendment to the contract with NV Maintenance dated March 23rd, 2022. An agreement with Long Island Bike Incorporated to accept donations of used bicycles that are received for disposal at MSF. Accept the proposal from FPM Group related to the professional services for quarterly and annually reporting for the Municipal Service Facility. Ratify the submission of an application for grant funding by the Security Grant Program in an amount not to exceed 50000 An agreement with Joseph Secreti doing business as Maxim K9 to provide a dog training service for animals at the animal shelter. Venue service agreement with Highlight Broadcast Network, the installation, operation, and maintenance of high cast equipment at Flynn Memorial Park baseball fields. And the last is satisfaction of mortgage for t participating home improvement clients that are received and referred by the Planning and Community Development Department. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Nazarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Wareheim? Yes. <clears throat> Approved settlement in the matter of Teresa Donnelly in the amount of $3,200. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Wareheim? Yes. And personnel items number 1 to 12 as described on the agenda. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Wareheim? Yeah. We have one site plan to vote on this afternoon. We have the minutes okay. approval for the site plan dated October 3rd and to conditionally approve the site plan for Jane Arrows, 711 Lake Avenue that was previously described at the beginning of the meeting by the Director of Planning. Deputy Clark, before you vote, Mr. McCarthy has a question. Oh, Mr. Mr. Brown? Yes, sir. Um, Councilwoman Noah made up a good point before that this one's going to be empty and the other one's going to be full. Could you get us the um, end term of the lease on the current one that's going to be vacated so we know and who's going to keep it? If you, like the one, we also have two of them. We have the one on 25A with 7-Eleven also vacated. So we can't have these two properties in disrepair if they're still on the lease because they will pay for another three, four, five years. We need to get to some sort of agreement on basically both these facilities. I know one's not your client, but we got to make sure these two old 7-Elevens are kept up and proper until new tenants are found. Understood. I don't know that answer off the top of my head. As I sit here, I could find out and I could report back to the town attorney and be happy to. Um, I will say that um, at one point we were discussing whether we could have a little 90-day window because we do have to close down the old 7-Eleven, move everything over to the new 7-Eleven. So if we could work that into uh, some of the arrangements, that would be wonderful. That sounds reasonable. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Sure. Okay. Deputy Clark. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Inzarello? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Wareheim? Yes. Okay, we have two speakers. Okay, before we start, public participation is subject to the rules of decorum, which you have on your speaker card. Public portion is for town related matters only. Any unsubstantiated, unverified, or material false information will be interrupted. The three minute rule will be in effect and will be strictly enforced. And please address the board. Let's give your name and address. Ann Hoffman? Um, I am here. I want to talk about the dog park behind the Smithtown Library that is in such disrepair, it's almost dangerous <coughs> to go there. They need, all they do is put mulch down. The last batch of mulch they put down was green. You cannot put green shavings, green mulch. It has fungus in it. We have dogs that are dragging their butts on the ground. We have another dog with a skin condition. We have three dogs that have developed pus pockets in their feet and in their ears. And I am an animal professional for 53 years. I know this stuff. 
Um, it's got to be taken down by bulldozer and re the six foot fence is two foot nine in places because two foot nine is right here from measuring fences all my life. And that's where the fence is because the, the dirt gets pushed up against the fence. The leaves are six to eight inches deep right now. If a dog poops in the leaves, we can't find it to pick it up. You know, st and whoever is coming in at night is stealing everything. We were told that the bags were being stolen. We apologize for doubting that. Um, I brought a whole roll of bags gone the next day. A friend of mine brought a box of 800 bags gone the next day. Um, somebody brought a ball chucker gone the next day. You know, so something's got to be done. There are no cameras back there. Um, I don't know if you can put up a, a taller fence and lock it up at night till, you know, like six in the morning or do something. But the dogs are getting sick from the green mulch. You can't put green shavings or green mulch or wet shavings or mulch in with animals. They do react, they do get sick. So, and my other thing is unrelated to this, I live at 438 Smithtown Boulevard, next to Parsnips Bar. Evidently, <coughs> the town of Smithtown will not let the landlord cut the trees down to fence level in the back so we can see the lake. I've lived there for 14 years, and I can't see the lake, and we pay a lot of money to live there. So, you know. We can't even use the backyard. It looks like a jungle. He won't, there's, evidently the town of Smithtown will not let him trim the place back. Okay, Mrs. Hoffman, um, your time is up. <laughs> Could you send your um, issues to me in an email? I don't email, I don't text. Okay, so then I would make an appointment with my office, come in. Okay. And we'll have a discussion about your issues and then okay. we'll relay them over to the Department of Park Buildings and Grounds. Okay. Who controls the dog park, and we'll have a discussion with our Department of Environmental Waterways who okay. uh, regulates tree removal. Okay. 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 Thank just you. have my number, just give me a call. We'll make okay. an appointment, you come in, and we can go over everything. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Barbara Hansen. My name is Barbara Hansen, 285 Terry Road, Smithtown. I actually wanted to speak before she did because I knew she was going to speak, but I have chronological information with the Parks Department. My issue was, is with a grievance to the Parks Department. Back in February, I called for the first time regarding the condition of the park. It was nothing but dirt <coughs> and mud. I left a message with the secretary. I called again in March. I called again in April. I called again in May, but this time I called the supervisor's office because he was part of and head of the parks department. Within an hour, I received a call back from the Parks Department. The gentleman, and I didn't write his name down because there are two people in charge of the Parks Department, not Mr. Uh, not Arico, not Mr. Arico, a, uh, another person there. He apologized and he said, <clears throat> give me two weeks and I will take care of this issue. Okay, I waited the two weeks and a few more days, nothing had been done. I called back, 
He returned my call and apologized and said that he was unaware that the job had not been done because he had given it to one of his men to do. He needed more time. He needed more time to get the park done because they were doing the fencing on Smithtown Boulevard and he needed a day to strip the park, level the park, break it, apply the chips. I said, fine. I waited three weeks. Again, I called with the same problem. And this time, again, I called the supervisor's office because that's when I got a call back. The man said, and this time he was angry at me, he said, we have no money, no workers, and no time. And after all, it's only a dog park. Because they were swamped with work, he promised that it would be taken care of in October. Well, one Saturday morning when I arrived at the dog park at 9 a.m. Samson, your time is almost up. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll, walk, I'll speak faster. The, park, uh, the parks department trucks were leaving. And I thought they had done the job. They said, no, we haven't done the job. We just yeah, dumped mulch. Why don't, we, why don't we do the same thing? Why don't you uh, join Mrs. Hoffman here, give us your issues with the dog park, and we will get in touch with the Department of Parks and see what we can do over there to make things a lot better. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. Just you, also, you have my office number because you've called a couple times. So. Uh -huh. Same thing. Give us a call, we'll, uh, and we'll get in touch with Parks and see what we can do. Okay. Okay, thank you. The last speaker is... Okay, Molly, go. <laughs> go, Molly. Bye, Molly. Danny pa Panagatos. It's about the dog park? Yeah, yeah. it's definitely been in the so I don't want to repeat the same thing. Well, um, once we get all the information, we'll, we'll get all the issues that are going on over there, and then we'll get in touch with Parks, um, and then we'll get them over there and see what we can do. Okay, because I've called a few times, but I'm going to pretty much repeat the same okay. stuff. I can tell you that the, just recently, of course, you know, we run a multitude of facilities with that department. Um, certainly the parks and beaches are now closing down for the season, so we'll, we'll, we will have more manpower that we, can, uh, that we can delegate over in that area, so we'll take care of it. Thank you. It was a lot better. Okay. Yep. That's it. Okay. I will move to close the meeting. Second. Supervisor Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilwoman Anzarella? Yes. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Okay. Thank you everyone for attending. Be safe. Mm -hmm.